Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. The U.N. Security Council will meet this morning about yesterday's violence as the U.S. moved its embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. I'm Laura Podesta in New York. I'll have the latest on what could be another day of protest. And have you seen those high-tech upgrades at fast food restaurant in Bozeman yet? Coming up, how they work and why you're seeing something that's been debuting in big cities now appearing in Bozeman. Good morning to you. Welcome to your Tuesday, current time 631. The United Nations Security Council will meet this morning about yesterday's violence along the Gaza border. More than 50 Palestinians were killed by Israeli troops during those protests. Nearly 3,000 people were also injured, and the region could be in for another day of protest. CBS's Laura Podesta has more. Palestinians are holding mass funerals today, part of three days of mourning after dozens were killed in protests with Israeli troops. 40,000 people showed up to the Gaza border Monday, continuing weeks of protests over a new U.S. embassy in Jerusalem, as well as a blockade by Israel and Egypt. They set fires and threw firebombs and stones across the border into Israel. Israeli soldiers fired back and dropped tear gas canisters from drones. Seventy miles away, the United States was celebrating the new embassy. The event made little reference to what was happening in Gaza, but White House senior advisor Jared Kushner did talk about finding peace between Israel and Palestinians. We believe that it is possible for both sides to gain more than they give so that all people can live in peace, safe from danger, free from fear, and able to pursue their dreams. Palestinian officials have cut off peace talks with the United States, saying they will not accept a deal with the Trump administration. Emron El Badawi, who teaches Middle Eastern studies at the University of Houston, says the embassy move does not help the situation. This really does represent a sort of de facto termination of the so-called peace process. I say so-called because it's already been sort of dead for years. The White House blamed Hamas, the militant group that controls the Gaza Strip, for the deadly violence. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. And a bit of an update this morning. The Israeli military says its aircraft struck a number of Hamas targets in the Gaza Strip in response to mass border protests. The military says Tuesday struck 11 terror targets in a Hamas military compound. Tanks targeted another two Hamas posts in the Gaza Strip. By no means is that story over. We'll no. continue to follow that progress. Right now, Matt, not a bad start to our Tuesday. No. Sounds like it's going to be an absolutely beautiful day. It's going to be a good day to, uh, if you, uh, like me, struggle to do the mowing. Right? Yeah, this afternoon may be a pretty good day to do it. Good. Mm. No to self. Actually, I did it yesterday, so I'm <laughs> Oh, good for you. Uh, temperatures into the 30s for the early morning for most of us. A little cooler out toward West Yellowstone. Our daytime high should be into the 70s. We're talking plenty of sunshine on tap for today and light wind. We do have some cooler weather on the way. We'll talk more about that, of course, coming up in just a few minutes. I got my mode yesterday, too, because oh, you wow. told me it was going to be a nice day today. Look at So I can you. go bike riding today. How's oh, that? Oh, good for you. 634, here's some more local updates of Bozeman taking steps to put more affordable housing projects in place in the next year. Commissioners voted on the proposals uh, last night at the uh, regular board meeting. Some of the goals listed in the updated plan include developing workforce housing, finding what housing concerns citizens have through an online survey, and then setting up a program for land donations for affordable housing projects. Affordable housing manager Matt Mar Matthew uh, Madsen says the city wants to work with uh, home buyers, the Montana Department of Commerce, HRDC, and real estate companies to improve and work on future projects together. Being able to engage these different, uh, you know, community partnerships, businesses, nonprofits, uh, members of the community, into helping kind of develop, craft, and possibly even implement parts of that action plan. Matson says the city needs to complete a housing needs assessment to find out which types of homes the city should focus on when building a ho affordable housing villages. And the inaugural Montana Threat Assessment Conference began yesterday at the Montana State University, aimed at educating local law enforcement on handling past tragedies like the Las Vegas massacre. The conference features guest speakers from the FBI and Homeland Security, along with other organizations. The conference lasts for three days and discusses topics like early prevention, cybersecurity, and emergency response. 
MSU Police Chief Frank Parrish says that this conference is a big step towards helping local law enforcement agencies to work as one when tragedy strikes. The world is changing and the challenges that we face are very complex. So it's important for us to not have jurisdictions that prevent us from being able to work together as a team. Whether you're a police chief or a superintendent, whether you're a teacher or a police officer, um, it's really important that we all work together to identify these risks and uh, address them before they become a tragedy in our community. Now the conference continues today at 8 a.m. Over in Butte, Montana Tech has decided and in, oh, Butte, yeah. <laughs> and in Butte, Montana Tech has decided to change its formal name and now it wants to hear from the public. The university will hold the forum tomorrow to explain its decision to change the formal name to Montana Technological University and the public is invited to attend and ask questions to make comments about that change. We've discussed this and, and vetted this with all our constituents and kind of the last step is, is to have an open forum for anybody to come tell us what they think of what we're recommending. Um, you know, as a public institution, we owe it to the public to, to offer that opportunity. Now the forum will begin at 6 o'clock in the evening tomorrow in the Copper Lounge of the Student Union. There's my name. It's right at the top of this one. Uh, there's something new in Bozeman that you uh, might only see in a big city. Jen's Caitlin Corbett tells us how a booming economy in Gallatin County has moved the locally owned McDonald's to upgrade its technology. Well, technology is taking over everything, and we all have to either step up or we're going to be backwards. That's why the locally owned Bozeman McDonald's decided to step up. They've installed two double-sided kiosks to make ordering and paying for your meal or snack in the age of technology faster. They're, they're able to come in, place their own order. We can take four orders at the exact same time rather than just one at a time. And so because of that, it does speed up the process. So it is a little bit of a, a faster process than it has been in the past rather than just taking one order at a time. And so that's been an extremely positive experience for our customers. And it's a, a definitely uh, made us as a team uh, gel together and work together more efficiently. Close to 35% of the storefront customers at the West Main Street McDonald's are now using these kiosks. And the restaurant also uses in-app ordering and a delivery service, combining technology with the convenience that some people crave. So there's all those pieces of technology that if we don't embrace it, we're going to be left behind, you know, as a society because it's happening in Europe and everywhere else. So here's how it works. Let's just say you'd like to order some french fries. You select your order on the touch screen, choose your size, then choose how you'd like to pay, and they'll bring your order right to you. And they say that the kiosks are actually making things a lot busier. Obviously we have four more order points and we've had to hire a minimum of 20 people. I mean, we really are even short 20 people. Um, on any given day at this location because of the demands of this new technology. But don't worry, the new gear won't be taking the place of cashiers. We've had a lot of customers that have come in and said, oh no, you're going to take the place of cashiers. But that is not the case. So we just had to shift our employees around a little bit. The Belgrade McDonald will be the next location to see these kiosks when they undergo renovations in August. In Bozeman, Caitlin Corbett, MTN News. Now we're told Cassidy says the uh, kiosks are part of a plan by McDonald's, which hopes to get the new technology in McDonald's nationwide by the year 2019. So you can get your chicken Miss Nuggets. There you go. That's always what I call is, them. Is that what you always call chicken them? Chicken Miss Nuggets with orange pop. Orange pop. Hey. It's good stuff. Some things never change. No, some things <laughs> never change. That's for sure. <laughs> good morning to you. We're so glad to have you with us at the start of your Tuesday. Up next, it is your weekly Montana, Montana Made Product of the Week with Harlow Town, Montana to see an innovative way that they are printing tickets. But first we're going to head to New York, check in with Nora O'Donnell for a look at the headlines coming up at 7 on CBS This Morning. Good morning ahead here on CBS This Morning. Dr. Tara Narula joins us on First Lady Melania Trump's kidney surgery and what's next for her recovery. And we've been following the story of a Missouri man held behind bars for nearly 20 years for a crime he didn't commit. David Robinson is now a free man and will show you his emotional reunion with his family. See you right at 7.